Okay, hello, BC brothers and sisters. Um, today I want to talk about a store. And uh, the store is owned by my buddy, Scott Schaff, and his lovely partner, Kim. It's called Pinwheel Records in the Pilsen neighborhood of Chicago, south of downtown. <laughs> and uh, it's hard when you're you have a friend who owns a record store, right? Because what if it sucks, you know? You still have to say nice things. You want to support your buddies. Luckily, that is not the case. It's a great store, one of the best in Chicago. And if you get ever get down here or take a plane if you don't live here, you want to visit this store. It's, a, it's just a great place. And I'm just going to go over a couple of the cool things I've got there over the, the years, a couple of years. Um, the first time we went was with some VC buddies, and uh, the store was pretty new. You know, there wasn't a ton of stock yet, but uh, we had a great day anyway, and he's got a free Pac-Man machine, too. Well, you know, don't let that sway you. Let that sway you, you know? Mrs. Pac-Man, I think. Anyway, the first time we were there, I picked this up, which is the Beat Surrender EP by The Jam. And... Uh, that was the start of our of our little record buying relationship. And uh, like I said, I've been back there more than a few times. And uh, one time there was a big bunch of Dylan that he picked up, and uh, I got two great records from the 1978 tour, which is maligned, and I understand because the one previous, the Rolling Thunder review, was pretty much the best Dylan era, for me anyway. I mean, from the time I was a teenager, I played that Desire record a million times. But, 78 tour, aside from they changed up the set list a lot, which was cool. So it warranted two purchases. One of these classic bootlegs that I've seen probably since I was 15 and always wanted. And grabbed another one while I was at it. They're, like I said, the, the set lists are quite different on these, so definitely both worth getting. And you don't, you know, you see them at other stores and they're 100 bucks, you know what I mean? Those are one-fifth of that, so great, great thing. And uh, recently I got one of, another one that I've been looking for forever. I mean, you could find this record for a couple of bucks, the... Uh, Isaac Hayes, Black Moses. Great record on, on top of it. But to find one that does the whole thing, it's too big to open up all the way. But you get all this deal, the, the big giant fold out, which if you do find them, they're usually torn in about three or four pieces. But pristine copy of Black Moses. It's going to take me the rest of the afternoon to fold it. Pristine copy and uh, I couldn't have been happier to find this at uh, the great Pinwheel Records. It was a fantastic uh, fantastic find. And the also this was earlier in the year uh, I was looking for a record I was looking for this record the fantabulous Walter Lure. And this one was really under the radar. You didn't really hear a lot about it. You know, and uh, I called him to see, hey, do you have that Walter Lure record coming in? And he didn't even know it was coming out. But ordered it immediately, three days later. Went in the shop. Now that is customer service, wouldn't you say? And uh, I didn't drag him out. But a funny thing, a couple of years ago on Record Store Day, right around the time I was really getting sick of Record Store Day, <laughs> um, of course I stopped there, you know, take a look around. And I found Love You Live and Between the Buttons and Mono by the Stones. And uh, I, I had both of those records for years, but they walked off. I used to have a lot of people I didn't know in my apartment when I was younger. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, he had both in the dollar bin. They play fine. It was like, screw $30 record store day and all that, you know. He made my record store day that time. Like I said, I forgot to drag the albums out. Whatever. 
Uh, on my most recent trip, and this, anyone who's thinking of going to the store in January 2019, where we're at right now, get there. Because he got a couple of big collections in, and uh, maybe get him to tell you the story about them, because they're really funny, but it's not my place. And uh, I was there, as I often am, with uh, the VC's own Perry Day, and uh, we usually have a a good good spell over there record shopping and he's got couches so we invariably end up sitting there and bullshitting for hours so it's good that he's got a couch you know so i'm i'm old you know you gotta sit on the couch but uh he had a lot of good stuff a lot of really rare stuff like the let it be box that was only available for a short time in the uk and canada and uh with all the pristine it's all pristine he had just tons and tons of stuff. Lots of Grateful Dead, lots of Dylan, and uh, lots of modern stuff, too. It's not just oldies, goldies over there, you know. I mean, if anything, there's less oldies stuff, but that's, you know, that's my thing. And my big find on this trip was an original on EMI, no less. Is that right side up? On EMI, no less. Regal Zonophone. Of one of my, my favorite Tyrannosaurus Rex album, but one of my favorite in the bowling canon. And uh, I had the original American Blue Thumb of this, and as I've mentioned a million times on the, on the group, I had a flood about 10 years ago, and it wiped out a good 100 records of mine, and this was one of them. You know, I had to throw away the ones that were so grungy and stinky that they were just never going to be right, you know, so it pained me, but... Lo and behold, there's a copy, you know, and uh, got a pretty good deal on it. And just, I wasn't even going to show these, but they're sitting right here, you know. And yes, the cover looks a little beat, but the record just played fine. I actually just played it for the first time. And uh, he basically threw that into the deal, you know, because they're really, he's really big on, you know, everything's playable. There's no junk. There's nothing that you're going to buy that skips to hell. I bought the Standells record off him for like three bucks a few years ago. And he was like, well, it's not that, you know. It was fine. Been kicking out the jams with it, you know what I mean? But uh, there's tons of good stuff there. And he's a great, great guy. And it's worth your time to check out Pinwheel Records in lovely Pilsen. If you're taking the train... Get off at 18th Street on the pink line, it's like two doors away. So you're set. So Scott, Kim, thanks for all the great records and many more to come. And I will definitely see you soon. And I hope some of you people watching this video, you'll see him soon too. Take it from me.